Welcome to the 2018 College of Alameda commencement. Please stand as the processional enters the stadium. Leading the processional are the Board of Trustees, Chancellor Laguerre, and Alameda Mayor Trish Herrera Spencer. Following is our keynote speaker, acclaimed actor Delroy Lindo, and Peralta District, as well as college and Alameda, administrators, and faculty. Honored guests, trustees, chancellor, vice chancellors, President Karras, distinguished faculty, classified professionals, family, friends of the graduates, welcome. My name is Tina Vasconcelos and I am the Vice President of Student Services here at College of Alameda and have the honor of welcoming you to our 2018 graduating class and commencement ceremony. Please welcome the Honorable Meredith Brown president of the Peralta Community College's Board of, Tr of Trustees. Good afternoon. This is a wonderful occasion, a wonderful day. I'm here to welcome you. Tim Karras, our president, I, Dr. Karras, sorry. <laughs> our Honorable Joelle Laguerre, our chancellor, Board of Trustees, faculty, students, staff, family, friends, this is a wonderful day. My remarks today are words of encouragement and greeting. We are very proud of our graduates. We're very proud of those who have helped them along the way. And we're also very grateful because we understand the power of education, that each graduate lifts up themselves, their family, their children, and their future generations. Kofi Annan, the Ghanaian diplomat who served as the seventh Secretary General of the United Nations said, knowledge is power. Information is liberating. Education is the premise of progress in every society and in every family. 
and we know that you've come this far carried by your talent, because you are talent, you are, you are talented and brilliant. But your own inner light, your own reflection of divinity is also collectively a bright light that can help our world be a better place. And we've come together today in unity to celebrate your accomplishments as we are being divided by race and violence, by immigration status, gender discrimination, sexual orientation, and every ism and schism that's out there to divide, to divide our humanity. But you are our guiding light, and you are our unity. And your education and your talent can help this world become the light that it could be. Supreme Court Justice Thurgood Marshall was asked to speak on the meaning of liberty on the anniversary of the 4th of July, or the Declaration of Independence for America. And Thurgood Marshall, being a man of courage and insight, said this, we cannot play ostrich. Democracy just cannot flourish amid fear. Liberty cannot bloom amid hate. Justice cannot take root amid rage. America must get to work. In the chill climate in which we live, we must go against the prevailing wind. We must dissent from indifference. We must dissent from the apathy. We must dissent from fear and hatred and mistrust. We must dissent from a nation that has buried its head in the sand, waiting in vain for the needs of the poor, its elderly, and its sick to disappear and blow away. We must dissent from a government that has left its young without jobs, education, or hope. We must dissent from the poverty of vision and the absence of moral leadership. We must dissent because America can do better, because America has no choice but to do better. You today are best. You are the better. You are the light. You are the unity. You are the hope. You are the promise. We are proud of you, and we celebrate you. Congratulations, class of 2018. Thank you, Trustee Brown. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Joelle Laguerre, Chancellor of the Peralta Community College District. Thank you. About two years ago, my uh, Chancellor's Cabinet uh, was meeting, and I shared with them that uh, during commencement is a great time for us to recruit new students to Peralta. Since I gave them the advice, they said to me, whenever I go to commencement, I need to do the recruitment myself. <laughs> so I'm here, uh, supporters of uh, our students, to recruit you to come to the College of Alameda, or Lenny College, or Merritt College, or Berkeley City College. I was uh, visiting uh, a church on Sunday and, and I saw uh, something they were talking about, and I stole uh, a quote from there that I want to share with you. It says, in every moment, there is the possibility of a better future. But you people won't believe it. And because you won't believe it, you will not do what is necessary to make it a reality. I think this is talking to many of us who know that we should get more education. We started this college uh, education perhaps, or we finished high school, or we know that we need more training. And a lot of times, we do not have the courage to move forward. So I'm here to tell you that there is a group, the group that you see today. About two years ago, or three years ago, and perhaps for some of them 10 years ago, they made the decision that they needed more education, and they enrolled at College of Alameda, and here they are today. They are encouraging you. Uh, I'm their spokesperson today. They're encouraging you, those of you who should make that decision, to make it. And to you, our graduates, I want to share the fact that uh, you knew that there was a better future for you somewhere, and you decided that that better future needed more education and you decided to get your education, I want to congratulate you on that. <laughs> However, 
There is even a brighter future. There is even more for you to accomplish. And I want to encourage you to not stop. See, for some of us, we know that going to college, going to university was difficult. And what we do is that we never left. We would transfer somewhere else. And then if it is only one course we take per semester, we did that. And at the end of the day, we get to where we need to be. So my encouragement to all of you is that the, education, uh, the additional education you need is waiting for you. And there is a brighter future there for you as well. I want to, uh, to, to start my remarks by sharing with uh, all of you a little secret that exists uh, in the state of California that many people have not heard of. It is called the California Promise. That is the California government. For anyone who graduates from high school uh, this year of 2018, will pay for one full year of your tuition plus one summer session. And if you graduate from a school in Alameda, the Alameda Promise will give you one additional semester. So what that means is that <laughs> what it means is that money should not be the problem for many of us to go to college. And perhaps it does not apply to some of you, but you have neighbors, you have friends, you have children, you have nieces and nephews, aunts and uncles who probably need it. So we hope that you're going to do that. And to you graduates, there is a better future waiting for you. I commend you for what you've already done, but I urge you to continue to do even more. Congratulations on your graduation. Thank you, Chancellor Laguerre. Please join me in welcoming Rochelle Olive, President of the Faculty Senate of College of Alameda. Hello and welcome. Greetings family, friends, faculty, classified professional, administrators, chancellors, vice chancellors, and um, Peralta Community College board members, and most of all, our keynote speaker, Delroy. And more importantly, congratulations, courageous class of 2018. Two words from the faculty to the courageous class of 2018 is press on. The journey to complete your community college education was the longest and sometimes the hardest steps in your quest to succeed. However, all of you have successfully completed this journey. You are now equipped to embark on a new journey. Take pride in your success. Know that you are loved and valued by family, friends, and the community of College of Alameda. Never compare yourself with anyone else. You are unique, special, courageous, and fantastic. In closing, I want to share three timeless truths to remember for you to remember. Number one, have a plan A and plan B for your new journey. When plan A gets too risky, too costly or too difficult, resort to plan B. Press on to plan B. Number two, be thankful for your failures. As you travel with this new journey, you are going to hit speed bumps and roadblocks that may cause you to fail. Remember, failures are nothing more than opportunities to succeed. As one gifted prophet stated, Forgetting what is behind and straining towards what is ahead, I press on toward the goal. And number three, always keep faith and hope in the front, front, forefront of your journey. Faith to believe you will succeed and hope to know that all things are possible with your divine maker. Graduates, for the last class assignment, you have two action items to complete for that final A grade. Will you please stand? 
all graduates please stand. Point, just a minute. I want you to point to yourself and I want you to shout out loud, I am an achiever. Number two, I want you to turn to your family and friends. <laughs> and I want you to proclaim out loud, I am an achiever. Okay. You've earned your A. Now please take your seat. As you take your seat, be aware that you're, you should be full of confidence that you will always, always be an achiever who will press on. Thank you. Thank you, President Olive. Please join me in welcoming Chantelle Owens Rogers, President of the Classified Senate of College of Alameda. <laughs> Greetings to the Chancellor, President Carras, Board of Trustees, administrators, faculty, classified professionals, honored guests, families, and graduates. College of Alameda graduates of 2018, it is finally time to celebrate this achievement. For the spirit of success is your own. You are awesome. You are more than you know. You are more amazing than you think and more capable than you believe because you guys can make a difference. Be confident, be brave, be you because you are awesome. Be humble enough to realize you still have a lot to learn, but be ambitious and enjoy life, enjoy to laugh and to have fun. Be proud enough to take care of your mind, your body and your spirit. With this, future at hand. May you continue to pursue excellence. May wisdom and insight guide you and strive to build bridges and not walls. On behalf of the College of Alameda Classified Professional Staff, congratulations to the graduating class of 2018. Thank you, President Owens Rogers. Please join me in welcoming President of the College of Alameda Associated, Associated Students, President Cle Clemus Tarvion. Thank you all. What a great day. What a great day. On behalf of the Associated Students, College of Alameda, I congratulate the graduating class of 2018. And I'd also like to welcome all the family and friends that came out to support this endeavor. Difficult roads often lead to beautiful destinations, and you all are proof of that. Now please join me in welcoming our College of Alameda president, Dr. Tim Karras. Hello, hello. Um, it's my honor today to congratulate um, the class of 2018 on behalf of our faculty, our staff, and our administrators here at the College of Alameda. I also want to greet and welcome the proud family and friends and board of trustees and city mayor and chancellor and other administrators here that are here to honor you and your achievement today. So I really want to thank everyone for coming and being present today for this wonderful achievement. And so my comments will be brief. Um, today, when I was driving to work on 880, uh, it took a little bit longer than normal, um, and I was reflecting. And first, my first reflection was the day many, many moons ago um, that I received my associate's degree in liberal studies. And that was such a happy and joyous day, and that felt so great to reconnect with that today coming to work. And then my mind wandered a little bit because of a traffic accident. <laughs> and then I started reflecting on all those others that today, through violence in our society aren't graduating. There's many graduates that didn't have the opportunity today to make it to their graduation. So then my mind went out to them and their families. And with that, two concepts kind of came to my mind and coalesced as I was coming onto the island. And the first one was the concept of gratitude. And just from the deepest pit of my soul for this college, I am so thankful that you attended the College of Alameda and you are part of our family and all your family and friends are part of our family and you can't get away. You are always a member of the College of Alameda family. And I am so deeply 
thankful for that because you've made us a better place to be. So thank you very much, graduates, for coming here and attending the College of Alameda. <laughs> Secondly on gratitude is all the knowledge that you gained from your instructors and the staff and administrators that you worked with over Lord knows how long, but for maybe a very long time or a short time, but they all impacted your lives and you gained knowledge. And knowledge, as was um, mentioned earlier, is power. And knowledge changes society and changes you. So just remember that. Keep going and keep learning and keep changing. That only makes the world a better place. So then the second concept came to me was about hope. This is all very hopeful, and I am so happy. You can see how I'm happy right now. Um, and it's so profound sense of hope that you're here and that you're going to be here and engaging with your communities and building communities. And the future is going to be much brighter because of you. Your class shares the values our society needs. You have a dedication to service. You have a genuine concern for the environment and sustainable living. You have tolerance of different lives and lifestyles and understanding the importance of collaborating amongst your community and within communities. So thank you very much. And all that makes your journeys very, very different. And that's a wonderful thing. No one should have the same journey. And remember to embrace your journey. It's going to unfold over your entire lifetime. And it's your journey. And be proud of it. Whatever it brings, it's yours. And we are so thankful that we were a part of that journey. And in the future, once again, I said you're our family. So this is your home. So after today, you're really not leaving. We still want those Christmas cards. We want to see you on alumni events. We want to see you on Twitter things. You know, I don't know about Twitter or Instagram or Snapchat or whatever you do. We want you all part of that every day for your entire futures. And that's what will make us happy and keep making us a better place. So thank you very much. We are so honored and proud of you today. And um, thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, let's applaud our College of Alameda president, Dr. Tim Karras, for that special presidential address. All right. All right. And you're not getting rid of me. I'm still up here. All right. Uh, so at this time, it's another great opportunity we have. We have two things coming up that will be really, really special. The first is um, I want to call Megan Rosal up. She's behind me somewhere. Right? All right, so Megan is here for many reasons, but one reason is she is the winner or, um, of our President's Medallion. Ms. Rosal is at the College of, Alameda, College of Alameda President's Medallion winner. She's a, she's a computer science major and will be transferring to continue her education. She's involved in extracurricular activities like MESA, which is a wonderful program, AEUW, which is the Association of American University Women, and they, oh, that's what it says. Um, and she is a wonderful student. I had the opportunity to select this. This is something I do every year. Um, and it's competitive. And she rose way to the top. And it is my blessed pleasure to be congratulating her and bestowing upon her the President's Medallion. Good job. Good job. Yes, give her a round of applause. That's really hard to do. It was not easy. All right, now I have the pleasure to introduce another student. This is like so fantastic. All right, so I want to call up um, Jennifer Griffin to the podium. Jennifer? Oh, always coming from my left, okay. And Jennifer is your valedictorian for the class of 2018. So give her a big round of applause. All right, your turn. Good afternoon to faculty, staff, parents, family and friends, board members, honored guests, and last but not least, the graduates of the class of 2018. <laughs> Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. once said, everyone has the power for greatness, not for fame, but greatness, because greatness is determined by service. I am proud to stand here today as your valedictorian. Congratulations to the class of 2018 on your amazing commitment to success and excellence. You have demonstrated a high level of responsibility and have challenged yourselves. You've all worked hard to earn your degrees and certificates. My intention as your valedictorian is to challenge you to greatness, to take risks, to have the courage to always speak your own truth 
to listen to the people you face along your life's journey because every person you meet has something to teach you. In going forward, there are always certain risks. In order to step out of your comfort zone, there will be risks involved. When you take risks, be a contributor to this world. I challenge you to take what you've learned here at COA and go fearlessly where no person has ever gone before. On your future journey, I challenge you to explore, to be open to new ideas, to learn new things, to advocate, to help others be of service, be a risk taker for progress. I took many risks to get where I am today. But I say to you, say to yourself, yes, I can. Here at COA, I've met many dynamic professors who challenged me academically. They inspired me to think outside the box. Thank you. Thank you to my daughter, Sarah, who graduates with us today. And to her fiance, Ryan, for being supportive and for helping me to accomplish my educational goals. Love you guys. During the course of my risk taking, I have stepped into an area of higher education at the University of Alaska Fairbanks. I've been challenged to help educate, to lift up indigenous communities from the cycle of addiction, which continues to threaten their people. Yes, I can be of service to our nation. And I believe you can all do the same. Exciting opportunities await those who are willing to take risks. Whether you're starting a new career or transferring to a four-year college, the College of Alameda has laid a foundation for your potential greatness. Take risks. Be proactive and make things happen. Become a change maker. I leave you today with another outstanding quote from Reverend Dr. King. If you can't fly, then run. If you can't run, then walk. If you can't walk, then crawl. But whatever you do, you have to keep moving forward. Graduates, stand up. Say to yourself, to your classmates, and to the audience, yes, I can. Yes, I can. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Griffin, for an outstanding and moving valedictorian address. Now for our keynote address, President Karras. All right. Um, it's my pleasure to not be the keynote address, but to actually introduce our keynote speaker today. Um, it's my pleasure today to, um, to introduce today's graduation speaker, acclaimed actor Delore Lindo. It's right there. Yes. Mr. Lindo continues to have a memorable career in which he has received critical acclaim, including a Tony Award nomination and received the Helen Hayes Award nomination and the Double AACP Image Award for Best Actor. He's acted in movies, television roles, and performed on Broadway. In addition, he has produced and directed a documentary film featuring Spike Lee. Mr. Lindo has a memorable, memorable roles in films such as Cider House Rules, Heist, Crooklyn, and Malcolm X. Other notable films, yeah, they're good films. Other notable <laughs> films including Wondrous Oblivion, The Core, The One, Gone in 60 Seconds, Ransom, Get Shorty, one of my favorites, um, Robin Almost Die, and this Christmas, a, re a recent remake, yeah, of Point Break and Pixar's Up. On TV, yeah, he currently appears in CBS's The Good Fight, and he's featured in television series such as Believe, Chicago Code, and Kidnapped. On Broadway, he's received a Tony and Drama Desk Award nominations playing Harold Loomis, Loomis in August Wilson's Joe Turner's Come Home and Gone, and played Walter Lee in the Kennedy Center, wow, and Los Angeles Productions of A Raisin in the Sun. <laughs> he's also directed plays, including The Blue Door and Joe Turner's Come and Gone, to critical acclaim at Berkeley Repertory Theater and won a Los Angeles Theater Weekly Award directing the play, Medallion of, Hawk, of Honor Rag. Rag. Okay, no, thank you. Rag. Sorry, I'm, I'm <laughs> starting to lose it. All right. All right, for education, he has an honorary doctorate in arts and humanities from Virginia Uni Union 
God, I'm, see, I'm not an actor. Uh, from Virginia Union University, a BFA, cum laude, good job, um, from San Francisco State University, and an MFA, yay, from New York University. So it's my pleasure to stop talking and bring up our keynote speaker. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Um, I'm here uh, this afternoon because of a, of a an event some months ago. Uh, convened uh, and Tony Cook was present, and that event, uh, among other things, featured an, a number of young people who were describing their educational journeys, the challenges that they had faced, and uh, some of which I related to because I had faced similar challenges. Um, Tony invited me to be here. I'm glad she did. And I'm going to uh, tell you a little bit about my story. I'm supposed to speak for 10 minutes. If I go over 10 minutes, just start doing that. <laughs> um, in, in thinking about coming here and starting to write, um, a phrase came to me. Uh, can you all hear me in the back? The phrase is, it's not where you start, it's where you finish. It's not where you start, it's where you finish. And where you finish in life, how you progress through life, depends on that phrase that our valedictorian mentioned, which is saying, yes, yes I can. You stole my phrase, but that's OK. <laughs> Um, it's a simple phrase and it's a complicated phrase, but that is the phrase that I want to speak a little bit about this afternoon. A lot of people around you may be saying, no, you can't, you can't do this, you're not good enough for this. And you all have to have the strength, the ability to say to yourselves, yes, I can, yes, I will, yes, I can. I think, I know in fact, that all of you sitting here have already made that decision for yourselves, otherwise you would not be sitting here. So I want to say bravo to all of you for being here wearing those beautiful robes. Bravo. <laughs> there was some young man in the, uh, in the meeting that we had uh, with Tony, and they spoke about some of the challenges they had faced. It may, we all face challenges. That's life. There are challenges that are inflicted on us from outside forces. There are challenges that we inflict upon ourselves. Certainly, I have done that. That's part of life. When those kinds of things happen, having the ability and the intention to say to yourself, yes, I can get past this. Yes, I will confront this. Yes, saying yes to yourselves will be the beginning of dealing with whatever it is you're confronted with. And the fact of the matter is, you all are living proof of having said yes to yourselves. So on some level, I understand that I don't have to say that to you, because you've already arrived. The fact that you're here wearing those robes indicate that you have already arrived and are ready for the next phases of your lives. I'm going to talk a little bit about myself. I love talking about myself. Um, when I think about my own life, there are certain things that I'm proud of. One, the birth of my son. My son is now 17 years old. And for all of us who have teenagers, right? Uh, we know there are challenges. Certainly, there are challenges in my household. But despite the fact that my son is one of the, the, the events, the birth of my son is one of the events in my life that I am most proud, of course, there are challenges. Had a huge fight with my son last night. Huge. Wasn't pretty. But in terms of 
addressing my son and doing all that I can to ensure that he grows up to be a young man on a journey to be the best that he can be, I have to say yes to him, even when it doesn't feel good. I have to say yes to myself. I have to say yes to our relationship and the continued growth of our relationship. Yes, I can. Yes, you can. I'm really proud of the fact that I have maintained a career uh, in an industry in which it is extremely difficult to maintain a career, and I have had some success. I'm extremely proud of that. God bless you. <laughs> but I am super proud of my educational career. In 2004, I got, a, I received a, I got my undergraduate degree from San Francisco State, cum laude, 2004. In 2014, I got my master's degree uh, from NYU. Now, I graduated NYU with a cumulative GPA of 3.952, which, under any other circumstances, that would have been enough for me to get honors. Uh, I, did, I discovered right before I graduated that the school that I was studying in at NYU, the Gallatin School of Individualized Study, did not grant honors. Um, yes, I was a little disappointed. However, the most important thing was that I had done the work and I had reaped the benefits of having done the work, just as you all have. And in thinking about coming here, it occurs to me we're all in this together. To, this, to the extent that you and the young man in the back who you may have seen some films of mine and you're proud of me, I'm also proud of you all because you all are the future. You are the future. It may be a cliche, but trust me, you are the future. And we depend on you to move forward through your lives and make the change in life that, is, that we need, particularly right now in America, particularly in the world right now. We need you. We're all in this together. <clears throat> in 2013, um, as the president mentioned, I received an honorary doctorate from, from Virginia Union University, um, the oldest historically black college in the country. And I was given the honorary degree in arts and humanities for my professional work. All of these things I'm deeply proud of. But I have to say my educational journey is right up there among the things that I'm most proud of in my life. I'm standing here having achieved certain things in my life, but I can tell you that it was not always this way for me. Uh, I'm the child of, uh, I am the child of Jamaican immigrants. Iri. Yes, I. Yaman. Come here, young man. It's a Jamaican thing, y'all. It's a Jamaican thing. <laughs> <laughs> Jamaican immigrant. Um, I was also what used to be termed when I was young a bastard child, which is to say that my mom and the person who fathered me were not married. My, the person who fathered me left my mother when she was pregnant, so I was raised by a single mom. All right. Let's hear it for all the single moms out there. All right. Amen. I was raised by a single mom up to a point because my mom was a nurse. And when she was studying to be a nurse, uh, she was living in residence. And so uh, they would not allow her to have a young child living with her. So I was sent to live with another family, a white family in an all-white neighborhood. I was five years old. Huge cultural and emotional shift. Uh, 
around the time I was 12, I went back to live with my mom, um, did some things that I should not have done, hanging with some folks that I should not have been hanging with. I was then taken away from my mother, and I was placed into what used to be called the children's aid system. I was placed in the system. Um, I did go to one foster home, but I was graciously asked to leave. <laughs> Yes, I was incorrigible. <laughs> so I went back to the system. Um, extremely challenging times. What stood me in good stead, two things. One, despite all the challenges, I enjoyed high school. I enjoyed it. And that became a foundation for me, despite all of the nonsense that was going on in my life. And the second thing, was, as a young person, my ambition to become an actor when I grew up. I had no clue how to do that. But the fact that I had it inside of me gave me, it sounds like a cliche, but it gave me a dream to hold on to. So it is perhaps a cliche, but if you have a dream, an objective for yourselves, Hold on to it. Do not let anybody take it from you, no matter what. It may be the most improbable thing in your life, but if you have it, if it's a part of you, hold on to it. I'm here to tell you that when I was young and I told folks that I wanted to be an actor, <laughs> yes, I got laughed at. And here I am. I'm part of my journey intrinsic to my journey was my ability to say, yes, I can. Yes, I will. And guess what? Yes, you can, and yes, you will. Don't let anybody take that from you. It's it said that success is the best revenge. Success is the best revenge. You guys are already on your paths to success. No matter what the difficulties have been, no matter what challenges you faced, the fact that you're here today wearing those beautiful robes tells me you've made the moves you need to make to start yourselves on the journey to whatever your success is. It occurs to me that My ability to say yes to myself, the fact that as a young person I had that dream of becoming an actor, that was my foundation. For those of you who may not perhaps have that same foundation, for those of you who maybe do not at this point in your lives, you're not necessarily clear about what you want to do, that's okay too. Because for those of you who may not be clear about what you want to do, what's important is that whatever you do, apply yourselves as strongly as possible. Whatever you do, develop what's called the work ethic. Because if you're able to develop a work ethic in situations that perhaps you're not, you're not going to be doing these things for the rest of your life, but if you develop a work ethic, whenever you find that thing, that's special to you, whenever you find that endeavor that sparks your imagination and sparks your creativity, if you already have your work ethic in place, you'll be far ahead of the game because you will know how to apply yourselves. You'll know how to work. So for those of you who do not have a dream for yourselves, you're not quite sure what you want to do, it doesn't matter. Whatever you do in your lives, Work at it. Apply yourselves. Because that in and of itself is success. When I look back on the various negative things that were in my life, negative things that were imposed on me by outside forces and negative things that I inflicted upon myself, it occurs to me that one of the things that caused me to survive was the fact that somewhere inside myself, 
I was not going to allow those external forces to define me. I define myself. And you all define yourselves, particularly in the face of people saying, no, you can't. You're not good enough. You define yourselves. And guess what? You've already done it by virtue of the fact that you're sitting here today wearing those robes. I heard yesterday that, um, and I mentioned to the president and a couple of people that, and this was mentioned to me by, by somebody who I had mentioned I was coming here to speak. And they said that Peralta College has a wonderful track record of their students going on to four-year colleges. Brilliant. Brilliant. You guys who have made the choice to say yes to yourselves and attend the College of Alameda, very, very smart. Because what you've done is you've entered into an educational environment without the cost of a four-year college. Very smart. Now, the trick is you've done the work. Continue doing the work in the next phase of your four-year college careers. One last thing I'll say is that as proud as I am of my educational academic achievements, you all <laughs> are already ahead of me. You're getting your degrees now. It took me until 2004 to get my undergrad degree. You guys are ahead of me. I'm not going to tell you how old I am, <laughs> but you do the math. It took me until 2004. You guys are here today as young people, as not so young people, having gotten your degrees. You're already way ahead of the game. God bless you. Bravo. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Delroy Lindo, for your informative, supportive, enthusiastic, and encouraging presentation. At this time, College of Alameda would like to present you with a very special gift. Yeah. I made him get up. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, no, 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 yeah. yeah. I like, said, what? no, we're not going out like yeah, that. Yeah. You got him a nice clap. Hand it yeah. to me. Hand it to you. Thank, <laughs> let's say thank you to our keynote speaker once again. We're so privileged to have you come here. Thank and you. a very small token of our appreciation is this plaque. Thank I you really very much, it. sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for having me. God bless you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, it's now time to complete the business for which we have all gathered the awarding of the academic degrees and certificates. President Karras, as VP of Instruction and on behalf of the faculty and staff of College of Alameda, it gives me great pleasure to present to you the candidates for associate degrees and certificates and to ask you to welcome them into the company of educated women and men. All right, we're almost there. All right. So, honored candidates, class of 2018, by virtue and the authority granted by the state of California and the powers vested in me by the Board of Trustees of the Peralta Community College District, yep, I hereby confer upon you, graduates of 2018, associates degrees and certificates certified by the Vice President of Instruction and your division deans and faculties with all the rights and privileges pertaining therewithin. Please move your tassels now, this is the good part, from the right to the left. Congratulations all. for joining us in the celebration of the 2018 graduating class of College of Alameda. This concludes our ceremony. Please remain seated as the dignitaries leave the stage and the students follow. Thank you.
Yeah, we gotta go. We gotta get out here. Uh -oh.